But now we get a chance to talk to one of the best, the very best lawyers in town. If you need help in divorce and family law, there's only one place you need to go, and that is to this man as we get a chance to talk to Jared Oxendine from Oxendine Law. The Ox joins us here on the home team in Hamilton show here on the fan 680 93.7 FM. Jared, good morning. How you doing this fine Tuesday morning? Good morning, fellas. Doing awesome. Thanks for having me on. Looking forward to the segment. Thank you for joining us. We love uh, talking to you because you give such great information. And the soup du jour right now is this divorce between uh, Bill Gates and his wife, Melinda. They've been uh, in the public eye for many years, and now they are, they've made a point in their relationship where they've decided to go their separate ways. There's now an allegation that Bill was removed, fired, if you will, from the Microsoft board for having an improper relationship with a coworker. So the question is, how does adultery play into a divorce action, and does it change anything if the non-cheating spouse knows anything about it or condones it. Yeah, it's interesting, all these little tidbits that are now leaking out on a daily basis with uh, Bill and Melinda, and I think we're going to hear more and more about it. But to answer the question, uh, if you can prove that the reason for the adultery is due, or the reason for the breakup of the marriage is due to an affair, so adultery, then you can make the argument to the court that it's not fair for the spouse who committed the adultery to get the same amount of assets as a spouse that did not commit adultery. So in other words, you can go into court and ask for more than half of the assets. The other way that adultery uh, can play into a divorce is let's say that um, you're the spouse that is a lower income earning spouse and you might have a claim to alimony. Well, if the other spouse can prove that you've been engaged in an adulterous affair, then you're not entitled to alimony by law. So it doesn't matter how poor you are, if you've never worked your entire life, if you're cheating on your spouse and they can prove it and prove that that's the reason for the divorce, then you can't get any alimony at all. And, you know, the interesting thing about the Gates case is we've heard some tidbits that Melinda was actually aware of his affair. In other words, you know, we've heard stories where he had a longtime ex-girlfriend, and Melinda actually allowed them to go on one vacation, like a month-long vacation, once per year. And so if you're Bill or any other person, and you can argue that, hey, yes, I engaged in an adulterous affair with somebody else, but my wife knew about it. She condoned it. She didn't care about it. She promoted it. She encouraged it. And then after she knew I had the affair, we, we made up. And, and the definition for making up under the law is having sexual relations with your spouse after they know that you've had an affair, then you can't use it against them later. So very interesting. Your thoughts on um, sticking with this situation. Uh, Bill's gone on record for a long time, said he was going to give each of his kids about $10 million, which was about 1% uh, of their worth. Melinda disagrees, and she's seeking to have their estate plans changed to give the kids a little bit more money. Can you control what your ex-spouse does with their estate as part of a divorce? So usually the answer is no. So 99.999% of the time, you have no control over what your spouse does with their portion of the uh, division of the proceeds. So in other words, you divide everything how you divide it. Husband has his portion. Wife has her portion. Either spouse can leave whatever they want to to anybody, and the spouse that is divorced from the other spouse can't control what that person does with their estate. However, keep in mind, everything's always subject to negotiation. So if you can work out an arrangement where your spouse is willing to agree to make some other arrangement to leave um, a portion of their estate to specific persons or maybe a larger share to the children, if they agree to it, you can make it happen. My guess is what Melinda's doing is she's got a lot of dirt on Bill, and she's going to come into these negotiations and say, hey, Bill, unless you want all this stuff to come out, I want you to go ahead and commit to giving our children a larger share of the estate. And my guess is it's because she doesn't want these girlfriends to have any. We're talking to divorce and family law attorney Jared Oxendine from Oxendine Law. Give him a call, 770-497-8688, if you are seeking help in your divorce. Um, when, when you're talking about divorces, uh, Jared, and kids are involved, uh, are there any situations that it makes sense to plan out uh, a time and a, a situation or plan out a time in, for, for the divorce to happen, maybe when it's uh, child turns 18 and when the child moves out of the house? Is there a time and place for it or when the divorce or you know you're going to have a divorce, go ahead and get it? 
Yeah, a lot of people make the mistake of staying in the uh, marriage because you still have minor children. I think that's a big mistake unless there's just not a major problem going on. I mean, if you and your spouse are getting along and the children don't see any areas of disagreement and they're living a normal, happy life, well, then you can make kind of the business decision, uh, so to speak, to stay married until the kids graduate from school. But if you're in a bad situation and the kids are seeing you argue and fight all the time um, and it's just a bad household environment, you're actually doing your children more harm by staying in the situation. So you're kind of thinking you're doing good, but you're really doing harm. I will tell you, as far as divorce planning is concerned, there are situations where maybe you should plan out your divorce. Let's say you suspect that your spouse is having an affair. And let's say you've got some exposure for alimony. Might be a good idea to contact me. I'll hook you up with a private investigator, and we'll do some investigation for several months to make sure we can get the evidence that we need to, appro- to prove that affair so that way, before we file, we got what we need, and then we file, and we've got them dead to rights. Other situations where it might make sense to plan, let's say you're married to a spouse that's a big income earner, and let's say they've got a gap in their employment. Well, that's not when you want to come in and file for divorce when they're unemployed, right, because that's going to affect <laughs> alimony and child support. So right. let's wait, right? Let's let them close that big business deal, get reemployed, start making that money again before we file. So sometimes it makes sense to plan things out. Jared Oxendine from Oxendine Law joining us here on the home team in Hamilton show 770-497-8688. I'm sure you've seen a lot of things and you'll see a lot more in divorce cases. Have you ever seen somebody show up for a divorce case with their fiance? <laughs> we have we, we have a local personality. I'm not going to say any names who the story now is they are engaged to a person who is in the middle of a divorce. And so the question is, how does it affect your divorce if you're already in another relationship with a person during your divorce case? And, you know, sometimes these people show up with their fiancé because they just want to rub it in, right? I mean, they want the others. Look what I've moved on to. So much better than you. Look how pretty. Look how handsome. You know, take that. Yada, can we just go? Can we go right now? (laughs) I'm ready to go. Take a load of this. What do you think about this arm candy? So, you know, yes, you see that all the time. Some cases it matters. Some cases it doesn't matter. If you're in a situation where you've got a lot of assets to resolve, and you're looking at potentially getting some alimony, the last thing you want to do is show up with your arm candy because your spouse is going to be upset about that. It's going to make the negotiations more difficult. They're going to think that you've been having an affair on them for years. Even though you might have just met this person after the divorce was filed, they're not going to believe that. They don't trust you. They're going to think this has been going on for years, and then they're going to want to go through your bank accounts and see how much money you've been spending on this person. So the best advice is if you have significant assets, or alimony exposure, just kind of keep that to the side or don't do it at all until we can get your agreement in place. Now, if you're in a situation where, you know, it's not an alimony case, you know, there's not like a controversy over the division of the assets, by all means, sow those wild oats and have a good time. (laughs) Thank you for the information. (laughs) Solid as always. He is Jared Oxendine. The number is 770-497-8688. We call him the Ox. You can call and ask for the Ox, too. Divorce and family law attorney Jared Oxendine. He will get you what you need. Jared, until next time, we look forward to you and have a blessed day. Thanks, guys. Enjoy it. Take care. The Ox, Jared Oxendine. He always uh, has relevant stories, and he's a really good guy down to earth, uh, can answer all of your questions. And so if you are at that difficult crossroads in your life, you want to make sure you have this number, 770-497-8688, and ask for Jared Oxendine.